There were three successive points of entry to the tabernacle, each more exclusive than the last. First was the multicolored linen gate, directing people into the court. All were welcome. It was 35 feet wide with room for whosoever will. Then there was the curtained door into the holy place. It presented the same surface area, 100 square feet, as the gate, but turned so it was narrower, thus more restrictive, but considerably higher, the door's height being the width of the gate. Through this, only the priests could enter the holy place. Finally, there was the veil, the separation between the holy place and the holiest of all. Beyond this, only the high priest could venture and only to do God's business on the great day of atonement. In the veil, we are introduced to one of the most remarkable masterpieces in the tabernacle. Quote, you shall make a veil woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. It shall be woven with an artistic design of cherubim, Exodus 26, 31. What is so remarkable about this tapestry is its twofold purpose. Yes, it barred the way, maintaining the honor of a holy God and also protecting any errant sinner from certain death. But there's something more. In the blue, purple, and scarlet threads woven into the white linen, we again see the heavenly origin, mediatorial rule, and sacrificial offering of God's Son. And again, there are the cherubim, like those who barred the way for our fallen parents into Eden. But in what way does the veil speak of Christ? No need to guess. Listen to the author of the Hebrews epistle, quote, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus through the veil that is his flesh. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Chapter 10, verses 19 to 22. So here is the secret. Christ's human body hid God's glory from humanity or else it would have consumed us but it also revealed God's character in human terms. God was manifested in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16. Although the veil, like Christ's flesh, blocked men from drawing too close to the one dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen nor can see, chapter 6, verse 16, it allowed them to get closer within the holy place than they could have approached by any other way. But now that Christ has died and his body veil has been torn in two, like the temple veil, we have access through him right into the holiest. What a stupendous honor. But how was the remarkable veil suspended? Quote, you shall hang it upon the four pillars of acacia wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be gold upon four sockets of silver, Exodus 26, 32. Now the door into the holy place had five pillars with hooks, verse 37, but the veil had only four. Let me remind you that the first great revelation of the Lord is based on the Pentateuch, what the Jews sometimes call the five-fifths. What was their purpose? The law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith, Galatians 3.24. Thus the law, like the door, did give access to the lampstand's light and the food of fellowship. But before the Messiah came, quote, the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, Hebrews 9.8. God then provided for us four more pillars of truth in the evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the law declared by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. Deuteronomy 19.15. Matthew, Mark, and Luke provide three independent witnesses in their historical biographies of the Lord. 
John provided a unique extra corroboration. By these we see that, quote, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John 117.